This is all about PG&E's renewal of the license for Lake Almanor and the Feather River. They called it the Stairway of Power. The interesting story about this is this is where they propose, and they still propose, to put a thermal curtain in. And the thermal curtain would go out 900 feet and across about 900 feet and back in, and so it would be a series of buoys that actually suspend a flexible fabric from it, goes clear down to the bottom. And of course the question is, well, what's that going to accomplish? Well, if you go back in history, there's a canal that goes all the way across beyond the end of the peninsula and came from the other side of the lake, which was the deeper part before they raised the dam. And they've raised the dam a couple of times. And so that channel, it's still there. And it's deeper than the rest of the lake and brings colder water in. So the idea was to, to take water from that channel and bring it in under the curtain and use the curtain to stop the warmer water. So that's the whole concept of a thermal curtain and they, were, they planned to do it right here. Now, the people in, in this area, we have different plans. Well, the purpose of the thermal curtain is actually to control, to, to control, to lower the water temperature about 30 miles downstream in the Rock Creek Cresta reaches, where they would like it to be under 20 degrees centigrade uh, during the summertime. It doesn't reach 20 degrees some centigrade during the summertime, and they've already done enough modeling to know, and then actually PG&E has spent millions of dollars researching this, and not only is it gonna do damage to Lake Almanor, but it doesn't accomplish what they want downstream. They've concluded in, in several studies that they will not reach that temperature, and they're still, uh, they still pursue this. The uh, interesting thing about building a thermal curtain, though, is that they would have to take enough, they'd have to dredge enough uh, soil out of the bottom of the lake that they would fill up this whole area over behind the new intake tower, like two football fields high, 20 to 30 feet. Be significant work that have to be done to do that. And it would also go through sacred Maidu grounds. So there's a couple of problems with that, or more than a couple. Uh, in addition, using that channel to facilitate a thermal curtain has already been predicted by the experts in the field to cause water quality damage and fishery damage. A couple of other reasons that we have been opposing the thermal curtain. Over my right shoulder is the newer of the Prattville intake towers. That, that's there for a different purpose. The old tower was simply to take water from Lake Almanor and put it in Butt Reservoir. This tower, on the other hand, runs a power plant the Butt Valley Power Plant, which we're going to visit next. It takes about, at capacity, about 2,100 cubic feet per second. Puts it into a long tunnel, goes several miles, and comes out in a penstock and goes into the Butt Valley Powerhouse, which generates a significant amount of power, and then empties into Butt Reservoir. Originally, the only outlet for Lake Almanor was at Canyon Dam, and that intake tower actually dumped water into the river at the Seneca Reach. This, on the other hand, has no river. It makes its own river by going through the tunnel and through the penstock, and that's how the water gets into Butt Reservoir from here. If you look over here to my left, you'll see the, the lone intake tower on this end of the dam, and originally that was the only intake tower. And contrary to popular belief that the, the lake here was to run the Caribou Powerhouse, originally it wasn't. The lake was built in 1914 because a powerhouse way down by Oroville Lake called Big Bend Powerhouse needed a steady supply, a reliable supply of water. And so that was the initial reason for from 1908 to 1921, that was the purpose of this dam. And then they decided to build the Stairway of Power, which started with Caribou One, and then multiple uh, dams and multiple powerhouses on down the Feather River. Uh, the water that you see going over the spillway right now is a, actually a bypass because they're doing maintenance work on the outlet. And, and they have to keep that water flowing all, all the time because that's part of the 1955 license 
to let at least 40 cubic feet per second uh, out into the Seneca Reach. Now, uh, the, the issue that we're looking at right now is the State Water Resources Control Board has filed uh, a plan. Uh, they want FERC to require 250 cubic feet per second significant increase. Uh, and yet we go back to the settlement agreement that all the parties signed, except for the State Water Resources Control Board. All the parties agreed to uh, significantly increase the amount of water that comes out of Almanor, uh, but not 250 uh, cubic feet per second. And frankly, we don't know where that came from. Well, here we're standing at the base of the Butt Valley Dam. This goes clear back to the 1920s when they put the dam in. At the same time, they built the Caribou One powerhouse down the hill from us, way down the hill from us. Um, it's interesting that when they had to drain this, this reservoir uh, a few years ago, 15 or 20 years ago, they found an intact uh, railroad engine. Uh, called the dinky, and uh, you can see the dinky at, now that it's restored uh, between the Builder's Supply in Chester and the Collins Lawn. Over the top of the dam here, we see the Butt Valley intake, which serves Caribou powerhouses one and two, uh, Caribou one being the oldest powerhouse, and the intake uh, inlet for that is the deepest in the lake and brings the coldest water out, and the higher intake serves Caribou number two, which is a much larger uh, Francis Turbine uh, built in the late 50s. Uh, interesting aspect of the cold water that comes out of this is that the, the groups that have been trying to get cold water out of Lake Almanor or, or Butt Valley Dam, Butt, Butt Lake, uh, they focused on getting cold water out of Almanor or this lake and they've actually been drawing cold water periodically from this lake. In the heat of the summer, when the Rock Creek Cresta temperature rises above 20 degrees centigrade, they have pulled cold water out of this lake by shutting off caribou number two and taking all the water at the lower intake and running exclusively caribou number one. Now, interesting results after 10 years of this, the reports consistently say no appreciable effect downstream in reducing the temperature. But what we don't know is what the impact has been on the lake because they only do this for a short period of time, maybe five days or so, because they know if they go much beyond that, because this is a shallow lake and a small lake, they'll pull all the cold water out of it and turn it into a warm water lake. So they're careful not to be, go beyond that limit. But still, there's been no monitoring of the fish and the water quality. Uh, as we did agree to do in the settlement agreement for, for Lake Almanor. Uh, when you start uh, pulling cold water out of a body like this, uh, you need to set up some rigorous monitoring. That hasn't been done here. So we don't know what the impact has been other than the fact that it hasn't had a beneficial impact downstream. Directly behind me, we're looking at the Caribou II turbine generators. Uh, they were put in many years after the original Caribou I, which is just out of sight. Uh, these are large generators. They're, I believe they're about 60 megawatts apiece, 120 megawatts. It's a large installation. And uh, it's much larger than the uh, Caribou I, which is in the old Caribou I powerhouse just out of sight. In fact, if you look up on the hill behind, you'll see three penstocks coming down. Each one of those serves one of the generators in Caribou One. Now, earlier I mentioned uh, taking selectively water out of the lower, the lower uh, intake tower at Butt Lake in order to uh, use only Caribou One so that they cool the water theoretically downstream in the Rock Creek Cresta stretch. Now, at the time that they do that, then they shut off Caribou 2, which is much larger. And of course, that generally coincides with the time that we're having the hottest weather throughout Northern California, and we need the capacity. 
So there's a disadvantage there, uh, and we're not really sure how that would pencil out. But when we're short of power and we're asking people to curtail their power in the rest of, the, of Northern California, well, we want to have all of our resources, especially the clean uh, hydro resources, working to our benefit.